Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, we are just about eight and a half minutes away from State of the Game number 167 today. I'm going to be chatting to Yannick and Johan about some stuff. Some transmog stuff. Sounds cool. Um, and we'll give you a bit of an outline of what's happening in the coming weeks. It's going to be cool. It does look like you can hear me. Actually, I'm going to unmute Yannick and Johan so we can chest their microphones as well. Testing. One, two, three. Yannick, Johan, come in. Yes. Hello. It's me. Hello, everyone. Okay. Seems to work. Fantastic. And uh, Yannick, you're, uh, you're breaking up a little bit, but I mean, such is tablet life. Thanks, Sticks. I, uh, <laughs> I will make sure that everyone is uh, loud and clear when we start the stream. Yannick, can you just test your microphone again? Yep. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to be okay. I mean, the working from home nature of it all is uh, is, is real. But um, I think we'll be okay. Let's prepare people. Yeah, this is pretty bad. I can hardly hear you. Okay. Hmm. He's in the dark zone? Yeah, pretty much. That is better, Yannick. Now we uh, we hear a bit of your room, and it's uh, it, it's better. I think we're good with that. You hear my? Uh, okay, so I think it's taking the wrong mic. We can adjust to make it work. One day, one day I would have a setup that actually works. It's good, it's good. All right, we'll be back in just under six minutes. Talk to you soon, everyone.
everyone, and welcome to State of the Game number 167 on the 19th of August 2020. Hope you're having a fantastic week so far today. Uh, I've got Yannick and Johan on the line. Let me just bring them up. Hey, guys, how's it going? Woohoo. Yeah. Good. I just I, hope my microphone Yannick. is working. Yeah, we got you. I've, uh, I've boosted you up. I might have to do a bit of an adjustment, but I, I think we're good. Johan, how about you? Okay. We, we can't hear Johan anymore, for whatever reason. Come through, Johan. What did you mute? He'll figure it out. All right. Uh, I'm going to get going on some of the things we need to clear off before we get to the discussion. Um, before, yes, we get to that. So the priority alerts for this week. There was a maintenance performed yesterday where we fixed an issue that caused Delta 3 errors when you were equipping some exotic weapons. That's been fixed. Uh, we fixed an issue that caused Clan XP to not update properly, um, and there was an unscheduled maintenance performed today, which took an hour and a half, uh, and fixed a backend error that was introduced with yesterday's maintenance. Um, we do still have some outstanding known issues, notably the PS4 blue screens. There have been some improvements made, um, and the fix for that is being deployed on Tuesday, which is next week, the 25th, uh, and this patch is PS4 only, so if you're on Xbox or PC, you won't experience any downtime with that. Yannick, anything to add on those points? Uh, no, I mean, you said it all, but yeah, the, the, we're hopeful with the, the blue screen uh, fix. Uh, it's, it's, of course, not going to fix every single uh, occurrence of blue screen, but we managed to isolate uh, what, what we found was the main cause of uh, recurring blue screens on PS4, and we are going to be fixing that uh, on Tuesday. So. It should, uh, it should be much better for PS4 players. Okay, it looks like Johan's still trying to fix his microphone. We still don't have you, man. Don't know what's going on. We'll, uh, we'll make this a Johan fixing his microphone stream. But Johan, uh, Yannick, you're going to have to lead us through some stuff without, um, without Johan for now. Uh, my ETA on Johan, I don't know. What's the over and under chat? Uh, I think I, I give Johan three minutes. Um, Yannick, what's your, what's your estimate on Johan fixing his microphone? I think we're never going to get him. You're never, we're never going to get him? Maybe I should prepare for, like, having... Uh... Ever. Okay. All right. Chat says 17 minutes. Whole stream. State of the game working as intended. Yeah. Uh, this is the nature of working from home, unfortunately. I can't help you, Johan. You're on your own. It's, uh, it's anything. Okay. So, moving on. I do want to kick off um, with some oversight because we do uh, have a lot of people asking about it already. They want to talk about things that are coming in the future. Um, but for clarity's sake, uh, these are the upcoming topics for State of the Game in the coming weeks. Uh, today, we're talking about uh, a system, which we're going to show off in a second. Yannick, can you tell us anything about this uh, appearance mod system? Yeah, well, we're going to be talking about it today. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's a, a cool niche feature. Obviously, it's not for everyone, and I know that there's been some expectations uh, with us saying we were going to be revealing a feature, uh, asking by, uh, by the community. But there's been uh, there's been some requests for it from uh, from part of the community, those who like you know like uh, catering or like tweaking their appearance, and this is what uh, what this is answering to. So it's uh, yeah, it's a cool uh, it's a cool addition with TU11. But obviously, that's not the big thing. The big thing being skyscraper that we'll be talking about in. Uh, in yeah, exactly. So then you'll also see Rainbow Loot improvements. Uh, we'll be talking about that next week. Any teasers on that, Yannick, or um, should we leave the I mean, discussion on that till next week? We, we've talked about it already, so it's uh, it's no big surprise there. But that's the second part of uh, uh, of uh, you know the jobs that we wanted to address that we couldn't do uh, prior to uh, to TU11. Uh, trying to you know make sure that when you get uh, loot, it's actually a bit more coherent in uh, what kind of uh, bonuses it gets. Okay. Um, and then obviously, like you said before, the big one, skyscraper, the new gear, the PTS. Um, there's going to be a lot to talk about. Then we don't have dates. We did confirm the PTS last week. Is there anything else you think that's interesting and of note in there? I mean, skyscraper. I mean, <laughs> so I think that's what everybody wants to hear about, right? I don't want to spoil anything. Obviously, um, we haven't given 
specific dates about releases for that. And I guess I'm, you know, kind of probing as best I can to see what I got. Uh, the current countdown clock on Johan's microphone is still running. We are five minutes into the stream and still no dice. I'll start working on some visuals. So if we need to uh, cut <laughs> Johan out of the stream, we can we can do that. It's just uh, the nature of the beast. And I guess I will try and work on that in the background. Um, okay. Moving on then. Um, this uh, is kind of our first state of the game where we are covering the upcoming TU11. We have said that it's happening. Oh, you're, Yannick, please don't tell me you're disconnected. Please. All right. I've lost both Yannick and Johan. So, uh, oh wait, Yannick's back. Yeah. Oof, man, you are scaring me. Can you hear me? Oh, we have Johan. Thank. I literally just. Go. I was about to like rage quit. Thank you for, yeah, uh, so, for sorting uh, out yeah. your stuff. Uh, Johan, can you? I got, can I got you, kicked uh, from the call somehow. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably on me because I had to reconnect to make it work. But, uh, now <laughs> it actually works. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to start crying. Um, okay. Whew. All right. I was freaking out for a bit there. Uh, we are, yeah, we're okay. Uh, I will, I will adjust Yannick's microphone. Don't worry about it. Um, Johan, you uh, may have been listening yes. while we we're talking about it. Can you give us um, a bit of your community developer perspective on the upcoming topics for State of the Game, like we were just talking about? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So obviously today we're starting out with uh, appearance mods, which is essentially a trans mod system where you can alter your appearance of uh, your gear. So for example, if you really like the look of a certain transit piece or something, but you want to use another one to optimize your build, you can then change the look of the other one to be like the one that you really like the look of. And that way you can customize your your agent to a much higher degree. And that's obviously very, uh, very good for just, you know, making your agent look as cool as possible, essentially. Then next week, uh, we are going to be talking about the changes or rather fixes towards Rainbow Loot, which uh, has been a common topic in the community in the last couple of months um, and talk about how we are going to address that, building on top of the changes and fixes that we did back in 10.1. Uh, and uh, yeah, then following that on September 2nd, which is the big menu item for most people, I think, we're going to be talking about the skyscraper mode, as we call it internally. And uh, it's obviously a PvE game, like we said. But beyond that, uh, you're going to have to wait until September 2nd. But uh, everything will be made very clear to you on September 2nd. You will have all the information you need to know. And uh, when you will be able to test it, exactly what it means, uh, etc. So, yeah. So we have those three set of the games lined up right now that will go through a lot of the changes that we're doing in the upcoming uh, title update below. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I want to move on to um, the appearance mod stuff. It's a, it's a cool little feature. It's, um, I'm glad that it's going to be included in TU11. Um, you know, some people love uh, customizing their agents. Some don't. I, I personally do. I know uh, Linnell probably going to make some horrible choices with his, uh, with his appearance, but uh, we will, if we do get any intriguing screenshots out of that, we'll make sure to share them. I do want to show it uh, from a build that was captured earlier today. Actually, Yannick, while well, you tell us um, some of the points that we can talk about. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, again, as we said earlier, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a feature that's meant for those who uh, you know, really care about the appearance of their character. Uh, and the idea is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a similar to a transmog feature, right? So it's, uh, uh, the idea is to uh, allow you to change the appearance of your gear uh, so not just uh, not your outfit pieces, but your gear. And basically what you're saying is uh, once you acquired any piece of gear, uh, then you unlock the appearance of that piece and you can apply it to any other piece of gear you have. Uh, so for example, here the chess piece, you see the list of all the chess pieces that that player has acquired already. And therefore you can replace the appearance of, you know, uh, Aguila with the appearance of anything else you want, even gear sets. 
so it's really for you to customize uh, the way your agent looks uh, even uh, even further. As you can see, there's just like you can change it as much as you want. There is no cost uh, attached to it, so it's really free. You can change it whenever you want. It's compatible with gear dyes, so you can change the appearance and then dye it in the color you want, uh, and uh, that stays on the item. Uh, so when you uh, when you unequip that item, if you reequip it later, just like any other mod, uh, that mod will still be there. But it's that mod is available for uh, all the items you want, so it's not. Uh, uh, it's not consumed or it's not linked to an item, which means you can put it somewhere else. It's just uh, a bit like weapon mods. You can put it uh, wherever you want. Okay. Are there any limits to what you can use this uh, system on? So the only exception is exotics. Uh, so we don't allow exotics to be uh, to have an appearance mod, and we also cannot give you cannot give the appearance of an exotic to another item. Apart from that, no, it's pretty much uh, free for all. It's just even uh, even items that are like, uh, you know, as you can see here, green items, blue items. It's available right from the beginning of the game. Uh, so it's not just an end game thing. You can do it uh, right from the, the very first levels uh, with all the items you get. Okay. You say exotics, but you can't you can't change the appearance of a weapon, right? Like if I have a sniper rifle, I can't make it look like an SMG or whatever. That's, that's not no, 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 you can't do that. Cool. That would be a little bit janky. Um, so it's going to be available to all players, uh, regardless of level, regardless of if you own Wallets of New York or not. So that's good news. Yes. Um, very cool. Um, the other question I did have that I, that I just wrote down, um, and I'm going to jump the gun a little bit, and I haven't actually seen it in chat, but I'm, I probably missed it. Just, uh, mm -hmm. I see, I see, sorry, can I reply to a question? Oh, maybe oh. that's what you were going to ask. Maybe. See a question in chat if it's retroactive. So what's going to happen is when this is implemented, uh, all the items that you currently own in your inventory or in your stash are going to be added to your appearance mods. Uh, but it's not going to retroactively uh, take items that you no longer have. So those you will have to reacquire again. But as soon as you drop it once, it becomes permanently added to your, uh, uh, to your appearance mods. That was kind of my question. Like, is it permanently there? Like, uh, because obviously this leads on to questions about stash space and that sort of stuff. Like, if I if I delete a piece, do I still have access to that as part of this appearance system? Yes. Once you unlock the appearance, you can. If you delete the item, the appearance will always be there. You don't have to keep the item. Okay, that's my question. Chat. If you have any other questions, we'll uh, try and answer those as well. Um, but just yeah, keep them coming. Uh, actually, Sticks is asking, is it account wide? Or is it per character? Uh, yes. You know? okay. This account wide. It is account wide, but once Title Update 11 comes out, you're going to need to log into each and every one of your characters to unlock all the gear that you have. So if you log into just one, you'll only have that character's gear. Um, and this is just a one time thing for the update itself, uh, of course. But uh, just so everybody's aware of that. Okay. So log into all your characters. That makes, a, that makes sense. Um, the other thing on the agenda for today, um, season two is continuing on. Yannick, uh, or Johan, since your microphone's working now, what can you tell us about the global event, Reanimated? So, oh, yeah, I mean, the Reanimated global event uh, is back. It started yesterday. You might be familiar with it from uh, season one. Um, there's, uh, you know, activities to participate in. There are rewards to earn uh, in the coming week. So if you're looking for you know, you look at the reward track if you're looking for something particular in it. Make sure you jump into the game and participate. And uh, yeah, the season continues. And uh, the global event itself will be available until August 25th. So that's uh, Tuesday next week. Uh, so you have quite some time to actually jump in and uh, participate. All right, cool. I mean, yeah, we've had this, uh, people know about Reanimated already. Um, so like, Johan says it's going to be available until the 25th. If you want to get your hands on some of the things on the reward track. Yannick, have you seen any questions in chat that you want to address? Uh, not yet, just people are saying that the community never asked for Transmog. So that's fine. If it's not for you, that's okay. You still get yeah. Skyscraper in TU11. So you'll have plenty of things to play with. And we have a bunch of sort of. Uh, yeah, gear changes as we talked about and all that. So there will be things that hopefully will be uh, satisfying for you. Yeah, I mean, and transmog is a pretty quick thing to talk about. Um, so we don't 
have many things to go into deep there. Skinny man's asking transmog library. Yeah, that's kind of what we just showed before. Um, uh, anything else in chat? I'll keep my eyes on it. Um, I do. What's the plan to tackle rainbow loot? Potentially is asking. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, next week we'll uh, we'll be explaining all the details on uh, how we're going to address that. Okay. Johan, do you know who we're going to have on the stream to talk about that next week? Uh, I don't know for sure, but um, in the hope is obviously if Nikki has time, that it would be great to have him on. Some of you might already be familiar with him, um, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely have someone on next week to talk about it and uh, the changes that we're doing in TLO. Okay, great. Um, I do want to move on to this one's a little bit special. I mean, this is shaping up to be a bit of a shorter string today because transmog stuff is very quick to talk about. Um, but agent highlights are usually we show off a little, uh, you know, some cosplay pictures, some things that people have been doing, but there's a really special one that's been going around the community recently from a, a guy called Andy, uh, Andy Macon, who's been uh, working his butt off on this custom PC. I managed to grab a minute of it. I hope Andy doesn't mind to show it off, but there's a competition running right now with Thermal Take. If you are interested um, in potentially entering to win, you have to vote. You don't have to vote for Andy, but you probably should if you like the division. Um, there's still what looks to be um, a case and a 850 watt PSU for people who vote as a potential um, prize. But I want to show you this. I'm going to shut up for a minute and show you this completely crazy PC. Um, there's a lot more content. So I'm going to try and grab some links as well so you can go and check it out. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Agent credentials authenticated. Authorization granted. Please stand by. Intelligent system analytic computer reactivated. All Isaac subsystems operational. That was the last step to getting Isaac fully restored locally. But we have a ways to go before we can celebrate. That's insane. Um, you should definitely go and check out Andrew's video about it. Um, I don't have the video link right now, but if anyone in chat does have it, I've just posted a link to the competition. So definitely go in there and, and vote for Andy because that's a crazy amount of work. Um, was there anything in there, Yannick, that you spotted that you particularly liked? I have my favorite thing. It's definitely the vertical mounted GPU, but. You know what, this is beyond me. It's like, it looks amazing. It looks amazing, but it, it looks way too complex for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and I play on PC. Yeah. I play on PC, but uh... yeah. I mean, the, hard, the hard tubing is sick. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, Andy, I don't know if you're in chat, but that was a uh, that was yeah. I say ten out of ten. Someone in chat was saying twelve out of ten. Uh, it is incredible work. So, props to you, Absolutely. and also uh, please give it to me. I see uh, Pestilence 20 and a few other people in chat asking about the pistol recalibration and pistol damage issue. That's something we're investigating. So just so you know, we are, we're looking at that. Yep. And uh, I also saw some comments about uh, like a DCP repeat glitch, like a damage glitch essentially. It's something that we're investigating, uh, but we actually uh, we come up short so far, to be perfectly honest. And if you have further information of how to reproduce it, uh, so we can fix it, that would be great, because I think that uh, providing that with us would allow us to speed up the process, assuming that there, there is uh, such a glitch actually uh, affecting PvP right now. So if you have more information, reach out uh, privately, for example, on Twitter, uh, the forums, uh, Discord, whatever your platform of choice is, and let us know. Uh, that would be great. 
but it's definitely something we're looking into and it's an ongoing investigation. All right, I have a question. I don't know if we have the answer to this, but I'll try my best. Reichel 2020 is asking, does the appearance change? So the appearance mod system, will that save into your loadouts or does it reset? And how is it supposed to work with loadouts? It's a good question. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I would assume it's saved with your loadout because again, it's a mod that is saved in your item. So uh, unless you manually then change the mod again in that specific item, uh, but basically, when you change your loadouts, it's always going to take the latest appearance one for putting those items. Okay. Um, I see some speculation. I guess I'm here. contradicting myself. It's not safe to use the loadout. It's just uh, basically going to put whatever appearance mode you had in the in the item when you equip the loadout. Okay. All right. Um, I see some speculation in here, Yannick. I don't know if we can talk about it, but someone's saying, is Skyscraper basically resistance? I guess we'll find out when we talk it's, about it in a couple of weeks. Skyscraper is its own thing. The, the okay. best thing you can do when you uh, uh, listen about Skyscraper when we're going to be talking about it is just start from a blank slate and just uh, you know discover it as a new thing. Don't try to compare it to other things. OK, that's good news. And if you're just joining the stream now, I just want to reiterate that today we've gone over the appearance mod system that will be coming in TU11. We've got a stream coming up next week. We'll be talking about the rainbow loot improvements. We know that's been a bit of a um, sore point for some players in the community. Um, so hopefully Nikki's going to be on to talk about that um, or someone else. I don't know if it's going to be Nikki. And then the week after, we know that people are kind of itching to find out more about Skyscraper, the new gear, and what's going to be in the PTS. We did I say we. I, I will take full responsibility for kind of blowing our cover and saying that Skyscraper will be on the PTS. But... I don't feel too bad about it because it's good news. Um, we don't have dates for it yet. It's funny how the story became, but uh, we were not supposed to stay to say skyscraper was on a uh, NTU 11 when we, we wanted to say it. It's just the way you said it that made me react. But uh, yeah. I anyway, people... I wanted to re to reply to a couple of questions in chat, uh, just again about appearance mods for those who care about it. Uh, the uh, Someone was asking just if we were going to add the option to hide specific gear pieces. Uh, so you could hide your chest piece and see the, the vanity underneath. Uh, that's not something we're planning. Uh, one of the reasons being to give you a bit of a behind the curtain information on how our game works is that uh, technically your character is like the model has nothing under the gear pieces. So if we remove your chest, you would have a transparent chest because there's nothing there. We're cheating. Okay. So, uh, so it's not necessarily something we can do. I see people asking about an option to hide, uh, force hide or force show the face mask. And that's something that's interesting and that we've been discussing, but we don't have, a, uh, we don't have that uh, just yet, but that's something we'd like to do. Cool. Um, I see, so a couple of things in here. This is actually a good point. I mean, it kind of fell into obscurity, but skill mod vanity stuff has kind of fallen off. Are there any plans to kind of bring anything else to that? Or is that something that's on the, you know? I mean, it, it exists and it's underused. So that's, uh, that's something we're uh, uh, constantly just uh, discussing as an option. Uh, we haven't really uh, found the pipeline in the team on how do we produce them, but that's, yeah, that's something we'd like to do. Okay, cool. I mean, because they are cool. Like the Seeker Mind Sparky one is really cool. and. Um, the, the shield decals and stuff. I guess we've had bigger problems to deal with, so that makes sense. Um, Steve Rogers is asking, is there any development going on hardcore mode? That's still where it is right now, from my understanding. Yeah, we have nothing new to, uh, to communicate on that one. Okay. Um, I do see a lot of questions, and I did ask Johan this question the uh, other day. The investigation into uh, what's going on with the data mine stuff around the raid. Um, the latest that I've been told from Johan is that it's all data mine stuff, correct? Yeah, so essentially... No, go ahead, Gilly, please. Sorry? Or should I? Uh, I was just yeah, asking you who should, uh, who should reply. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Okay, so essentially... Investigation is done since uh, quite a long time ago, and uh, uh, 
the data itself is not leaked information. It actually, uh, from a data mine essentially, from the PTS that had some information about outcoming rate. And the document is not an official document, essentially. Um, that is what I can say. As for anything beyond that, I don't think it's a, I think it's a great idea to go into it now because uh, then you get into very complicated things like who can prove what and that sort of thing. But just to confirm, it is 100% data mined. All right, thank you. Um, I see another question. Any plans for cross save? There's currently cross save between Stadia and PC. I mean, but uh, no, not as far as I know. Um, no. Yes, uh, Lyndon, Jeff, the sound in the state of the game is uh, very messed up. We are still working from home, so we do have to kind of work with what everyone has. Obviously, my microphone sounds the best because I'm the person that is streaming this. Um, and then everyone else's stuff is coming into my setup and then coming out to you. Um, but we think it's important that we still do these streams. Are there any other questions, Yannick and Johan, that you want to address before we uh, say good night to everyone? Uh, I've seen a few people asking about uh, like uh, the mod slots becoming generic for gear. Uh, some people saying, I've heard rumors about it. Is it true? Or, yes, it's true. And that's something we'll be talking about next week as well. Great. So okay. I'll, you can uh... any color of mod in your gear. All right, I'll keep us here for a couple more minutes before we leave. Um, no, skinny man, we do not have a TU11 release date yet. Yannick, is there any kind of speculative window uh, for that? Or soon TM is the, the word on that one? Well, I mean, we said the PTS is coming, uh, and that you can do the math on you know, how long does usually a PTS run. But it's, it's always the same. You know, the, we have dates in mind, but we, we don't want to announce anything because we want to keep the flexibility of moving uh, things depending on how the PTS is going and depending on how work is going on. You know. Uh, on all the things that are coming in tier 11. Cool. Um, DJ May is asking, these are, these are, you know, some smaller questions. And then you hear hair. I don't know how people say hair. I think hair options for players coming. I don't think so. Not that I know of. No, not at the moment. No. Okay. Um, all right. Um, Ben saying I miss survival. I've actually seen a lot of people playing survival. I myself have been tempted to log into survival because uh, that thing is still sick. Um, Night Daz, we did talk about the Kena bug. Um, Johan, is that fixed or is that still to be fixed? The progression blocker in the Kena fight. Uh, so definitely partially fixed at the very least. There might still be some occurrences of it potentially, uh, but. Uh, it should be fixed in most occurrences. So if you're still experiencing it, please let us know and we'll definitely take another look, but uh, it should be uh, more or less fixed. Cool. Yeah, um, do please let us know on the forums or um, reach out any way you can if you're still experiencing that. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, we've addressed all of the things that uh, are being talked about. All right, so next week... See, I, saw, I saw someone in chat just asking, uh, is the game dead for you guys? And it's like, no, it's not. I mean, we have TU11, we have Skyscraper, we have a bunch of things coming, we have another season. Uh, there's other things we're working on that we're not talking about just yet. The game is not dead. We're still here, we're still working on it. Uh, we you might just not be working on the one thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you we might not just job? be working on the, the one thing that every single one of you wants, but uh, yeah, yeah, there's still things coming to this year. Cool. Yeah, there's uh, definitely a lot of stuff coming. Oh man, you've set the uh, speculation train off already. Apparently, Yannick has confirmed a new Dark Zone. Um, all of that sort of stuff. Oh, Fantastic. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be called a liar already soon. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to leave it there. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in today. Like we said before, with next week we're going to be talking about the Rainbow Loot improvements, and then the I, I'm itching for a bit of a bigger stream as well. A nice information packed stream as well uh, and on september 2nd we're going to be talking about skyscraper i think that's going to be a long one uh the new gear and the pts and how all that's going to work so september 2nd is going to be our next big one but we are going to go through rainbow loot improvements next week so there's a lot to talk about uh, and then obviously as things arise any issues we'll be talking about those here um thanks everyone for tuning in today um we did get johan's microphone working i don't know what the official clock on that was eight minutes and I'm not sure 
um, but we did get you. So thank you, Johan, for making that eventually happen. Um, and thanks, Johan and Yannick, for joining today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chad. We'll see you all again Have a good one, next Chad. week. Uh, and go and get that reanimated global event, which is live now. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.